Welcome to this celebration of July 4th, actually on the 3rd, but that accommodates special needs tomorrow as well. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate with us. I'm grateful to the Sons of the American Revolution for being here with us as well. And another special guest a little later. Uh, this is a great day and on behalf of the Northern Neck of Virginia Historical Society, of which I am president, I'm pleased to welcome you to this annual event. And nice to see so many of you here. So without further ado, we'll begin because we invite you all to remind you again to Yokomiko Church at a service, brief service that follows this event, but we need to end on time here, so we get on time there at 9 a.m. So without further ado, I'm going to step aside and see what happens. <laughs> Good morning. I must say I'm astonished to see so many people gathered at the cemetery at this early hour. Uh, as for myself, I came out early to pay some respects uh, to Mr. Reed's relations, uh, hoping to escape the heat of the day. Uh, it's been dreadful lately, but this morning seems to be quite pleasant. Uh, oh, forgive me, let me uh, introduce myself. I'm John Augustine Washington, a Bushfield here in Westmoreland. You, know, you may know uh, or know of my dear brother, His Excellency uh, George Washington. Uh, hmm. now, as I look out upon this group of smiling faces, I, I, I recognize some, quite so. Some of you were present last evening at a tavern nearby. Perhaps point you out individually, but uh, you seem to be enjoying your uh, fish house punch quite well. Uh, besides the libations that were flowing, there was considerable conversation. And being a observer of people, I must say that some of the topics um, showed some degree of uh, frustration uh, on your part. Talks of fear, there were talks of uh, revolt, talks of uh, various military actions that apparently have been taking place in our northern uh, colonies. And uh, in the absence of regular uh, viable news, the, the mind begins to fill in the blanks that the head cannot otherwise do. And so, I, since you were gathered here this morning, I, I thought perhaps that I might be able to provide you some objective information as to the current state of affairs so that you in turn can decide what is best to protect yourselves and your families and property with this, uh, uh, the unrest that is currently going on around us. Now, uh, you may recall that uh, it's been some 18 months ago, well, first let me clarify, we are sitting here today, this morning, this third day of July, in the year of our Lord, 1775. Uh, it's been roughly 18 months or so since you may recall the events in Boston with the Tea Party uh, escapade there uh, as a matter of protest. Now, in the months that followed that, uh, there were various intolerable acts passed by Parliament meant to further well, our uh, thirst for protest and uh, doing away with this dreadful taxation without representation. And uh, actually, one, one year ago now, uh, my dear brother joined with uh, George Mason in cra uh, crafting the Fairfax uh, Resolves uh, in, in June of 74. And uh, as a matter of protest. Now, being uh, many of you citizens of our, our great county of Westmoreland, you may or may not know that the very foundations of the Fairfax Resolves were your document, the Leedstown Resolutions, which we crafted February of 66. And I was fortunate enough to, to sign uh, as well. So you should take great pride in that. Um, also ongoing these last few months, uh, Continental Congress uh, approved and encouraged uh, self-protection. In so doing, 
a number of our jurisdictions have created stores of powder and munitions in the event that British activity becomes overly aggressive. Now, the, uh, our dear general uh, on the British side of the territory, shall we say, uh, has come to knowledge of the stores of powder that exist in Concord and in the colony of Massachusetts. And uh, he had his troops march upon it. You must know this. And now, we don't know how or who fired the first shot. But at the end result, when the powder had cleared, the fog had cleared, eight of our Minutemen lay dead on the ground. Another dozen were wounded. The troops marched off to Boston, but retribution was to be had. For on their return trip, our Minuteman snipers uh, reduced their number by threefold compared to the losses that were previously sustained. So retribution has been, has been had. You should also know that um, some two months ago, our our troops captured Fort Ticonderoga, and along with that, a considerable store of munitions that will prove to be very valuable to us as we move forward. At the end of May, uh, three additional uh, generals on the British side uh, have uh, reinforced uh, Gage in Boston. The entire colony of Boston, of, of Massachusetts, has now been declared in a, in a state of rebellion. Now, you must think, what does this have to do with me? My friends, you cannot be so naive as to believe that these activities that are increasing in their intensity and frequency are going to reside solely in the Northern Territories. They are going to come to your doorstep. And you must understand, you must be prepared to do what is best for your family, your property, and ultimately, your nation, because the battle will be coming to your doorstep. Now, on June 14th, there was a debate in the Continental Congress. And that debate was to who was going to be our commander in chief of our armed forces. Now, there, there are those, and among them, John Hancock, who himself desperately wanted that position. I submit to you that by virtue of divine providence, my dear brother, General Washington, was chosen for that role. And on the 16th, he stood before them and accepted the commission and responsibility. So again, if we as a great people believe that it is necessary to form a continental army and to have a commander-in-chief, we're talking about more than skirmishes. We're not talking about reconciliation, turning the other chief. Time for all that is past. Sooner that we realize that here in Virginia, the battle is coming to us, whether we want it or not, and we must be prepared. I, um, I try to share these things with you, not to create fear within you, but to try to pull away the fog, the uncertainty, the lack of viable news in the newspapers. I'm giving you the most current information available. It is coming to your home. And the sooner that you attach the appropriate responsibility to your actions, then you'll be better able to protect your family and your, and your property. I must take my leave of you now as I'm uh, due at the church very shortly and I must move on to Bushfield to oversee some repairs. But when I see Colonel Lee, I shall make him uh, aware of your courteous gestures and paying your respects here this morning. Um, and if you are sufficiently recovered from your last evening's activities and care to join me at Bushfield later today for a glass of port and in initial conversation, we shall carry on. Good day.
There you have it. In a nutshell. <laughs> Next on our program, we shall have presentation of wreaths. Inside the cemetery here has been placed wreaths in honor of Richard Henry Lee by several organizations. As I call your names as a wreath presenter, would you please come forward to the entrance of the cemetery and pay honor to Richard Henry Lee. From the state of Virginia, Sons of the American Revolution, I want to introduce President Jeff Thomas. Representing the James Monroe chapter, Sons of the American Revolution, George Beckett. <laughs> From the Colonel Fielding Lewis chapter, member Paul Cox. From the Merlin, Sons of the American Revolution, John Hanson Chapter, President Craig Smith. From the Virginia Society, Dan River Chapter, President Gary Hall. the Virginia Society Fast Facts Resolve Chapter, President Dave Cook. From the Children of the American Revolution, the Virginia Society State President Sarah Cox. <coughs> From the Children of the American Revolution, Virginia Society Chapter, Colonel Alexander Spotswood Society, Anna Cox, President. From the Northern Neck Historical Society of Virginia, President Charles Sidnall. This concludes our wreath presentations for today in honor of Richard Henry Lee. Thank you, Charles. We want to conclude our program with a the Liberty Song being said together. Before we say that and depart, you're all cordially invited to your comical church for a brief service of patriotic music and prayers for our country. Following at 9 o'clock, it will be over at 9.30. We always do that. Uh, we ask that you wear a mask inside at that service, and if you did not bring one with you, masks will be available to you when you enter. Please join in the reading of this Liberty Song together. Thank you. Come, join hand in hand, brave Americans all, and rouse your whole heart and fair liberties. No tyrannous acts shall suppress your just claims, or stain with dishonor America's name. Our worthy forefathers, let's give them a cheer to climates unknown and courageously steer. 
Through oceans to deserts, for freedom they came. The dying bequeathed us their freedom and fame. Then join hand in hand, brave Americans all. By uniting we stand, by dividing we fall. So righteous the cause, let us hope to succeed. For heaven approves of each generous deed. In freedom we're born, and in freedom we'll live. Not as slaves, but as free men, our money we'll give. Thank you for coming.